Yes, I admit, I should have covered this a long time ago. Like Bobby Ewing getting out of the shower, I'm back. Maybe not with the physique of the old bobster. That kind of went south many years ago. This is the Immersive Optics 5x30 MD Prismatic Scope. What a mouthful. It's tiny, but a powerhouse for PCP air gun shooters. Watch on. Hello there, and welcome to the Airgun Gear Show. 10 years plus, I've been saying that now, and in that time, people like Shrek and all that lot have come out and gone. Immersive optics have been around for a couple of years now, which is a good thing. It means it's not an Alibaba special brand, which unfortunately we see so much nowadays in the airgun world. I have to admit, I have tinkered and tested this in the past. However, in the past few weeks, I've used it more and more because it just works so well. Let me show you. Firstly, it's a zero eye relief scope. Now, the manufacturer would like me to say that some models can be used on recoiling guns. I'm going to say that I have tried it only on PCPs with that zero eye relief and I like my eye socket as it is. So I've tested it on PCP air guns and that's all I'm going to quote. It's a prismatic scope. Now I will try and explain to the best of my knowledge. I'm sure someone will correct me so check the comments below. But basically two prisms line up inside the magic tube and they gather the image and push it through to the eyepiece at the back. Because it's a prism and not lenses trying to line everything up like a regular scope, the image is almost parallax free and that's becoming more and more pleasing to me. Inside of course there's still glass, immersive optics calls it ED glass or low dispersion glass and it works really well, whatever you want to call it. Parallax, let me try and explain this as best I can. And some people will tell me I'm wrong and that's what the comment section is for below. But this is what I understand it as. On a regular rifle scope, when you look through the glass like that, your eye is further back and that's your eye relief. Now, you have to look dead center through that scope and you want as clear an image as possible. If you don't get dead center through that scope, you get shadowing or a tunnel effect or something like that. Now, on some scopes, you get a parallax wheel either on the side or on the top. And that parallax wheel can be used for range finding and for bringing your target into focus. However, it has another purpose. If you look through the scope and you've got your range and your target, if you bob your head a little bit, ever so slightly with the gun in position, you want to turn your parallax wheel until you get as little bobbing on that reticule as possible. Because that then means that you're tuning all of this up to make sure that your pellet goes exactly where you want it to land. Now that's my basic theory on parallax. With a prismatic scope, as we said before, you get a lot less eye relief compared to a conventional scope. And mine for me is about there. Now to get yourself set, what you want to do is use your focus ring at the back, okay, and this is going to bring your crosshairs into focus. And get that nice and clear on the crosshairs, and then you're going to point at your target down range, and you're going to use your focus ring on the side to bring your target into focus for you. Now here's the clever bit. Once you've got there with all that, you look through and you can very gently bob your head a little bit. Now if that crosshairs is going up and down, what you do is adjust that focus ring a little bit more, like that, and it removes the bob on the crosshairs, which means your pellet is more likely to go where your crosshairs are on, and that's the reduction of the parallax effect. Now I'm not saying you're going to get zero parallax effect using one of these but from what I can see you get far less than using a conventional scope and that really is because you've got those prisms doing their magic 
and you've got a lot less to look through compared to a regular scope. Therefore, to summarise the whole parallax thing, it is generally regarded that a fixed focus prismatic scope has less parallax error compared to a regular scope. However, that is fixed focus. That is probably why you get less parallax error. And, of course, on a regular spotting scope, you have the ability to zoom in and out. It's a choice. It's not one for me to make for you. I am simply telling you how it is. Fixed magnification. Now, mine is 5 by 30, and it's more than enough. And the image is presented approximately 45 mil from the eyepiece. This is the zero eye relief part. Of course, a regular scope image presents further back. But on this, that image pops. It's really noticeable. And once you get the hang of being closer to the scope, it works really, really well. The scope also presents a huge field of view, up to four times more than a regular scope. So if you're scanning yeah, for pests or want to use that image blur um, around the target to help range in competition, there is plenty to see. It really is a totally different experience than using a regular scope. Popular with competitions where you can't touch a scope once set, they are steadily building a following. Weighing in at approximately 450 grams, it's a weight saver. With top turrets that are covered by one of those, and they are resettable themselves. And in my experience, I have zeroed at 25 yards, and that's it. I haven't touched it after that. I use the mill dot etchings on the reticule to just hold and shoot. And I can shoot a sub 12, 2 2 from 10 yards to 75 yards quite easily without having to dial. And this is all achieved by using the included mounts. And you get three of them, and they're Picatinny. So if you're fitting a dovetail rifle, you may need a quality converter. But those mounts have a very clever feature. You can set the level of adjustment you want on the side just here. Now, my impact has a 20 MOA rail as standard, but if your rifle does not have that, you can add it when you set up your scope on the mount. It's simple, use the three base screws and select what you need and then tighten it down and then drop the whole thing onto your rifle. It's clever. And the 34 mil tube mounts are already installed on the scope and included. And that's a big thumbs up. Something that I have noticed with these Picatinny mounts on the underside is that on all three separate ones, there is only one pin here that will slot into the ridge on your Picatinny mount. So if you need your scope to go a long way back, like on my impact, don't panic if that isn't fitting in the ridge. Because it's a recoilless rifle, those mounts actually still work very well. And you can just go ahead and tighten them down. And the one with the ridge, you can just tighten it down. And I know it's not connecting with that, but as long as you tighten those down, because it's a PCP rifle, it's not going anywhere. There is plenty of dialing on those turrets. I'll put the numbers on the screen now. So if you use that in conjunction with your adjustable mounts on the side, you've got more than enough for most uses. Minimum focus of six meters is what the instruction manual says, but I can see forever across the field. So again, it's more than enough for most PCP air rifle shooters. There's also an illuminated reticule, which is sort of just here. And there's a little snag with that, as I found out. It's a single press on, press again and again until you get your choice of lighting, then hold approximately for five seconds to turn it off. However, the snag is that that battery cap needs to be a little tighter than, say, some other scopes. So just pinch that cap a little bit tighter to get that button working. Don't over tighten it, uh, you know, don't jam it against the focus ring, just hand hold and tighten it. But if you do not tighten it just that little bit more 
uh, you won't be able to activate your illuminated reticule. Okay, it's there, it's a thing. I'm telling you about it. The manufacturer says waterproof. Well, that's with the turret caps on and everything, let's be clear. And when they say waterproof, it's not I've been in the bath or in the shower proof, it's English weather a little bit proof, okay? Nitrogen filled and it sizes 72 by 53 by 130 mils. And that size makes it small, see? In comparison to a full size scope. And yes, it is something to get used to, but I've been using the longer mount on my impact and I use a red laser in the front set at 25 yards so that when I want to move the scope to the small amount for using my pod at the back, I'm using that to help me re-zero the scope really quickly. So the extra bit of rad at the front is actually quite useful. I have the mill dot reticule, okay? So it's like the big cross with the markings on it, but you can get what's called a mill dot rapid scope, which is like a half circle with a dot in the middle if you don't want to use the markings like I've got on mine. And if you wanted the mill dot rapid, that would be ideal for something like close range ratting or things like that. Still perfectly capable as a scope to shoot further distances. You just wouldn't have all those etchings on, on the standard mill dot scope. I have installed the optional extra flip up cover, which is best I found to remove the scope to install. But if you're not going to buy one of these because they're sort of you know a few pennies more um the rubber scope covers will do you just fine sort of like that going onto the back see uh, 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 and then that one there will go on the front but you're not going to use that because you've got that on there so i should really have taken that off yeah i didn't didn't actually think that through did i mm. It does come with this, the rubber eyepiece boot, whatever you want to call it, the rubber tube or whatever. Hold my hands up, I take mine off. Uh, it seems to suit me better, but I take mine off. But you can put it on or off or on or off, but I take mine off. The fit and finish, I have to say, is excellent. And it's a high quality scope and it's comparable with anything else uh, on the market. Now... I have scratched mine a little because I've been putting night vision units on and taking them off and on and off. Um, so you have to kind of accept that. Everything is a bit of a tight fit at times when you're trying to be clever. Um, so yeah, I've marked mine a little bit, but that's just cosmetic and it really hasn't detracted from the ability of the scope. To get the best images, I've had to get Ben in with some extra camera equipment and some very clever lenses. Don't expect super one. clear images from your pod or anything like that it's going to do basic stuff for you but for these high quality images that i'm showing you from the immersive optic scope um it's taken a bit of extra camera equipment all right now night vision add-ons and i've got to take that off to do this well they work just fine it's a five power scope and if you're picking one of the others in the immersive range just take into account the power you select because this obviously magnifies as well um, you can't change the magnification once you've got the scope so just think that if you're going to pair it with something else you don't actually want too much magnification but this 5x30 works really well with the pod and the sightons and i'm using a eagle vision adjustable mount uh, to clip that on and there you go it's it's as simple as that you want to make sure that when you're doing that, whether you're using an Eagle Vision Universal Mount or you know, the supplied collars, that you're clipping onto the big part of the mount here, the big part of the scope just here. Not the eyepiece or the bit just behind it, but the collar just there. Make sure you clamp into that one, otherwise you don't want to damage anything at the back. And when I say clamp, I mean, you know, we're not trying to hold up the seven bridge or anything like that you're just trying to get it in place so that you can go out and shoot with it so does it work i mean it's smaller it looks different it's got a fixed focus however yes by the power invested in my large belly it works really really well i mean really well now i would not recommend it for a springer sorry that's just my opinion if you're a Springer shooter, then go and get yourself a cheap PCP or a CO2 rifle. 
uh, just so you can use one of these because it is actually going to be well worth it. It's compact. It comes with Picatinny mounts. It's so easy to look through. <laughs> um, and you've got all that adjustability built in as well. And the thing is, it's available now as well. I'm not showing you something that is on the Never Never. Um, they are available now. And I really like the almost zero parallax shift. It does help my shooting. I'm holding with the dots and not dialing. And I hit what I need to. It's a crisp, clear image. And it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to the zero eye relief bit. But I have to say, I do have to say this, this, it is really, really good. That's it. I hope you found this useful and informative and you now understand what an immersive optics prismatic scope is. Please like and subscribe and please press the bell so that you get the notifications so that YouTube will tell you when Bobby has decided to get out of the shower again. That's it. I'm done. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.